Hey, what's up guys, I'm Tin Lun. Welcome to this exclusive behind the scenes look artist commentary as I'm painting this Air Max Uptempo 95. This is one of my all time favorite shoes and um, I'm excited to kind of talk you guys through my thought process as I'm painting this thing. And now I'm not gonna show you the entire thing in full speed because that would take forever. So I'll be fast forwarding some parts just so we can move it along and keep going and you're a busy person and you have things to do. Uh, but my goal here is uh, to provide this commentary so that hopefully uh, you guys get a kind of a glimpse into my process and learn from my process and see how I do things, why I make certain decisions, why I'm doing certain things. I think that's one of the most fascinating things when I watch other people's tutorials is not necessarily watching techniques, but having them explain why they did something that they did. And I think that's one of the best ways to learn. So hopefully you guys can get a little bit out of that from this. So as you can see here, I started with a completely blank canvas. It's already pre-primed um, and I did not do a pencil sketch beforehand. And I used to, when I did my first couple of paintings, I did start with a pencil sketch because I was a little nervous. I didn't really have the experience to, to start without a pencil sketch, but after painting a few of them and understanding how the paint works, now I know that I can actually start without a pencil sketch. And the reason that I can do that, and you'll see that in this painting, is that I can start and if I make a mistake, I can simply paint over it. And this is acrylic paint, so it's very forgiving in that way. What you can't see off screen, kind of across from where this painting is, I have the actual shoe propped up at the angle that I'm drawing it at. I'm drawing the shoe from a life shoe. And as you can see, I started with kind of a mid-tone the red, uh, which is part of my palette. The palette for this painting will be red, black, and white, um, obviously because that's the color of the shoe, the colorway, my favorite colorway of this particular shoe. So I'm starting with the mid-tone because I know that I can cover it up for the most part if I need to. And again, you'll see that a lot of my process is just painting things and covering it up, but not all the way, and then painting it again and then covering it up. And so it's just constantly layering on paint and all those different layers are what kind of makes up um, my chaotic but organized chaotic style. Like you'll be able to see some red underneath some of this black that I'm laying down right now. You get kind of a hint of the colorway of the shoe without it being like solid blocks of color. So yeah, I use the red, the mid-tone to kind of lay down the quick outline just kind of get an idea for the general shape um, placement of the shoe. I can already tell at this point that the, the shape of the shoe is a little bit off, but I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm going to keep going. I'm also thinking that generally I would like my shoe to be a little bit longer. Um, from my perspective, from directly overhead, the shoe feels actually a little bit short and a little bit stumpy. Um, I think generally shoes look better when they're a little bit elongated. Um, but again, I'm not letting that bother me at this point. I'm just continuing on with the painting and right now I'm deciding to go ahead and lay down uh, some of this solid black color because the, this black part of the shoe is a very prominent part of the shoe and it kind of determines um, the proportions of the rest of the shoe. So I'm kind of laying that down just to see, get an idea of what that feels like. Um, and uh, as I continue to lay down a few more details um, and I'm using these details, referencing other points of the shoe, making sure that I have the proportions right, making sure that I have the sizes of things correctly. And you'll see in a little bit that I actually realize that my proportions are way off. So um, I will do a kind of a semi-major correction to part of the shoe, uh, which you'll see coming up here. So the brush I'm using for this is just a simple um, paint brush from Home Depot. It's a one inch wedge brush. It has kind of a chisel tip to it. Uh, and I like that because it, it works well with the natural angle that I hold my brush. I have a lot of other brushes, but this one seems to do it for me. But I encourage you guys to experiment with a lot of different kinds of brushes, see what you guys are comfortable with. Um, find one that kind of can be your, your workhorse. And this one has been my workhorse for a lot of different things. I used this brush very prominently when I was doing my 36 days of type project, which I'll link up above right now. Um, and this brush works great for house paints. It works great for acrylics. Yeah, it's just overall, it's just a very solid, very nice, good quality brush. 
So now that I have the basic shape of the shoe down, I'm going ahead and adding some background. Um, none of this is planned. I'm just kind of going with the flow. Uh, I'm deciding that, you know, I'm, I'm going to lay down some red where the background is going to meet the black parts of the shoe, uh, just for contrast. So, you know, I'm just kind of laying down some red, mixing a little black here and there. I kind of like to feather in the background into the shoe a little bit so that they kind of overlap each other in a sense. That'll, again, with the layering of the paint, that'll get covered up and then, you know, I'll do it again and then it'll get covered up and then I'll do it again. Um, and so you'll see now with the, the lighter part of the shoe, white, the background, uh, I'm going to lay down black just for the contrast. One thing to note is that I've never taken a painting class ever. Um, I'm not an educated painter. I watched a lot of Bob Ross when I was a kid. Actually still watch a lot of Bob Ross now. I love, I love watching Bob Ross. Even though he paints with oil paint, I feel like the techniques still apply to acrylic paint. For those of you who are thinking, oh, you know, I, I have to go to school to learn how to paint. I mean, some people learn well that way, um, but I'm here to tell you if someone tries to tell you that you should go to school for painting, um, it may not necessarily be the way for you to go. Um, you could potentially learn all you need to learn uh, from YouTube and practice. All right, so as this background gets laid down, I'm just kind of blending it into each other just so that it's not so uh, blotchy. I want it to kind of be one big solid background, but with, with colors that blend naturally together. And you'll see that I often move from doing backgrounds back to details of the shoe. I mean, I'm just constantly looking all over the place. And if I see something, I'm gonna go ahead and change it because if I see something I need to change, even if it means having to change the color in my paintbrush, um, I'll go ahead and do it. All right, so this is where I'm noticing that my proportions are way off. Um, the shoe is way too tall, which I mentioned earlier that I felt like the shoe was way too short in length. And I realized that the main problem was that my height proportions were off. So if my shoe is way too tall, it's going to look way too short uh, lengthwise. So I'm going ahead and laying down what's going to be my new lines up by the ankle collar of the shoe. And I think at this point, I'm just like exhausted for the day. So I'm going to go to bed and then look at this in the morning. And I think that's important to do as well, because when you come look at it with fresh eyes, you'll see a lot more issues. So here I am back the next morning um, and I can see where my new guidelines are for the color of the shoe. And I'm just going to take the white and paint over uh, the old parts. And, you know, the paint has dried overnight, so painting it over with white um, should not you know, drag any color along. It should be a pretty solid white um, since the, you know, the black and the red is no longer wet. I'm going ahead with the white and I'm just, you know, correcting the shape of the shoe. And you can kind of see that it's starting to look a little bit more, more of the classic Nike shoe silhouette. And again, even if you're, even if you're doing this and you chop too much off, you can always add it back in. That's the beauty of the acrylic paint is that, you know, you chop too much off, you can add it back in. If you add too much, you can chop it off. And acrylic paint is just very forgiving in that way. Now that I'm watching this for a while, I'm noticing that I'm just turning my head so that I can watch what I'm doing. I'm tilting my head. I totally picked the wrong camera angle to shoot this painting since I'm painting it at the angle that I'm painting it. So I apologize to everyone who's <laughs> whose heads are tilted and I, I apologize if you guys develop a neck crick from watching this. Um, maybe you can rotate your monitor or something and, and watch it more upright. So one thing you'll notice that I'm constantly doing in addition to fixing the shape of the shoe, I'm also trying to define the exterior edge of the shoe. So in this case, I'm painting along the bottom of the shoe, um, making sure that that sole, where the sole ends uh, is defined against the background. Um, and again, that's going to get painted over a little bit, you know, it, it's not going to be as defined as it is now. But as I do this along the way, it really helps me define the shape of the shoe. It adds layers and texture to the painting. It just generally contributes to, you know, the final product. You know, once you do it a few times and, you know, you realize that, you know, none of the, none of the strokes that you make have to be permanent. You can, you can fix it, you can tweak it, and that really frees you up to just kind of go crazy with the painting. Whereas if you're drawing with pencil or, you know, some other medium and you make a mistake, you have to sit there and erase it. 
or you know it's it's kind of a pain in the butt to fix it but here to fix something you, you just keep going you don't have to backtrack to fix a painting mistake you just keep painting and so there's there's a beauty in that where you know you can just keep going with your process and never have to break your flow and you know this i, I feel like this yields a much more natural uh you know finished product and what's kind of cool too is if if you have some leftover paint on your brush that you're, you know, you maybe you're about to change colors or something and you have all this excess paint on your brush, I actually take that and smear it into the background. Um, and you know, those, those mixtures of paint colors, I mean, that's your whole palette that's sitting in your brush right there. So to smear that into your background and blend that into your background, that's adding more character to your background without completely breaking from your palette. You know, it's, you're, it's already naturally part of your color scheme and you can just add more character by you know dumping your excess paint onto the background and then you can change out your paint color and keep going until so you'll see here that I'm, I'm tweaking this larger swoosh right here um, and there's a little too much red up on that top part of the curve of the swoosh and I'm gonna have to fix that later um, but it's no big deal because you know it's so easy to just paint over it or you can somehow work it into the style of your painting I mean that that red splatter actually looks kind of cool. Um, I could keep that there. See, and I just love the way the texture builds when you have layers of paint over layers of paint. Um, even in that black part of the shoe, that big black stripe that goes across the middle, the actual shoe, that's just a solid black stripe. But in the painting, there's a lot of red in there. There's some white mixed in there, which makes some gray. And the way that that texture forms throughout all this layering it, in a cool way it's still you know you know that it reads as black but there's like bits of red in there and I think that's super cool that you know you, you look at the shoe and it's still generally the the correct colorway of the shoe but then you look closely and you're like oh there's some red in this black oh there's some white in this red and there's all sorts of color in this white part you know it, it's not a prominent part of it but those little textures are kind of what give the painting the the unique vibe so at this point i'm starting to feel pretty good about the shape of the shoe i'm liking the proportions so i'm starting to kind of make these uh black outlines a little less prominent you know i the shoe itself has no black outlines on the upper it's just a white upper so i'm kind of fading that out a little bit and making it feel a little bit more natural here i am making some final tweaks and the black paint is actually as it dries it seeps into the canvas and creates this kind of dull color and it's not black black and while i don't want the entire thing black uh, i do want some parts of it to feel like jet black so there are some parts where i'm gonna take the brush and i'm gonna dip it into some solid black i'm gonna actually just kind of make some black streaks and those streaks uh, will suggest enough heavy black that okay this section is heavy black but just the whole thing doesn't have to be black those areas that i want to be more solid color i'm leaving them as globs i'm not i'm not spreading the paint out onto the canvas i'm actually just basically dipping the brush into paint and i'm not brushing it onto the canvas i'm more of just um kind of letting it glop on and the more solid that it sits on the canvas you know it's going to take longer to dry but it's going to appear a lot more of a solid color after these reds dry they almost look pink i've purposely left dark thick reds in certain places just so that they stay red and so now i'm bringing in kind of my signature tool so to speak um it's a homemade cola pen. It's a pen that's made from a number two pencil, a cut up Coke can or a soda can, and just a little bit of masking tape. I have a video on how to make a homemade cola pen, which I'll link above right now. I'll also link in the description. But I love the cola pen because there's a control to it, but also a randomness and a chaos to it. The texture that it creates when you make the strokes, and I love that you can just splatter ink everywhere. And this ink that I'm putting down right now is just India ink. I'm no longer using acrylic for this part uh, because acrylic is too thick, it won't splatter this way. So I'm dipping the cola pen into India ink and I'm just letting it fly. <laughs> and it literally does fly. Like I have, I will find splatters of paint across the room 
uh, like days later, I'm like, where'd this come from? Oh, right, from that splatter session the other day. Um, so if, if you don't wanna make too big of a mess, I would uh, maybe cover some stuff up. All right, so this is pretty much uh, finished now. You can see I've also added some white splatter along with the black splatter. Um, I've splattered a little bit of red, not too much, uh, because there's so much red already in the painting. Uh, but I, I did go ahead and splatter a bunch of white in there. You'll see in these close-ups, uh, some of those India ink strokes or splatters have actually turned into a kind of an off black, which is fine. You know, it's it, even if it's not solid black, it still adds texture to the painting. So um, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, it turned out really cool uh, and you know, even though I started with no pencil sketch I w and I messed up a little bit on the shape of the shoe, I was very easily able to, you know, fix it with the acrylic paint. And again, best thing about fixing a painting with acrylic painting, to fix a mistake, you just keep painting. You don't have to backtrack. You don't have to break your process. Just keep going. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like and consider subscribing. Share this video with people that you think will find it valuable. Please feel free to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me paint in the future, um, a process you'd like me to talk about. Yeah, thank you guys so much again for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.